start in with a spatial node and then a nav node and then a navigation mesh instance node and then a mesh instance is a child of that. Let's create a ground to walk on. So that'll be a plain mesh. I'll set its size to 20 and 20 and then create another nav mesh as a cube. Good enough there. Now if I click this navigation mesh instance, it has these meshes as children. I can go click create new navigation mesh and then just click bake and you'll see it generated a nav mesh. So it's entirely based on the geometry that are its children and this basically defines a walkable area. If you call the get simple path method on this navigation node, it will return a path based on this nav mesh. So if you start here and want to move there, it will create a path moving around this spot. So now I can just like say I want to create some stuff out here, right? Click bake and you can see all these areas have been defined. Some neat things you can do. So let's say I raise this up a bit. So if I click bake here, you'll see you can't walk under this. If I go into here and I look at under agent, you can see it's height. So it's generating a nav mesh for a specific sized person, you can think. So it's a person that's two units tall, so they can't fit under this. And they're 0 0.6 radius. So let's say I increase this to a two radius and a height of one. Then I click back here and I click bake. Now you can see they can fit under this, but they can't go in any of these other spots because they're too wide to get to any of these areas. Another thing you can do, max climb, this determines how high they can climb. So if I set this to like three, I click bake, you can see it can now climb onto all of these. However, you can see that it's kind of clipping through these spots. So you want to make sure that whatever collision you have is on a different layer than the ground, or you probably have to play with some settings in here to make sure that it doesn't do that, but I'm not familiar enough with this to know how to do that. For now, just make sure that it's if you're going to have a climb like this, make sure it's on a different collision layer than the ground, otherwise it won't work. And then finally, there's slope, which determines how steep of a slope that it can walk up with. Right now, it's a max of 45 degrees. Another cool thing you can do, if I generate this, I can go in, select this, and I can save it here. Let's say, call this short wide. So I just saved that. And now I saved this nav mesh. And then I can generate another one. So let's go and make our standard, let's say, I click save as, and I'll call it regular unit, maybe. Now I have two nav meshes saved. I can create another navigation node with a nav mesh as its child. And then I can just go in and load in, let's say load in the short wide one on this one. So that way I don't have to, since it's based on the, when you generate, when you bake the nav mesh, it's based on the meshes that are its children. I don't have to move them to this nav mesh to generate a new one. So like, if I have two different kinds of units, like let's say I have these short tanks and then I have these tall infantry, I could generate both of them here. And then just save them and then load them to each specific one. So this one's the short one and this is the wide one. As you can see them both there. If I hide that one, you can see it. I hide this, it'll hide the geometry, of course, but. So, and then I, you can swap them out on the fly using that. So now to use it, actually, I'll just delete this and I'm gonna create some collision for these. So just mesh create comic static body on this. And then I'll do the same for, just delete these. Same for the cube. something like that. Rebake this. And I'm going to go create a new scene here with a kinematic body. 
and a mesh instance is its child capsule mesh and we'll just rotate it lift it up a bit like that and I'll call this a unit and then I'm not going to add a collision shape right now so I don't really need it to collide with anything I will add in as a script so this simple script here just gets a reference to the nav navigation node. Here's how fast it can move. Um, this will contain path information like what node it's on and the full path. Then a move to method. So it's in the units group. I add it to in the ready function. And then so there's a move to method that takes a target position and just gets a path from the navigation node from its current position, global position to the target position and sets its current uh, node to zero. And then if we're still, if we haven't reached the end of the path during the physics process method, we just get the direction from our current node to, or from our position to the next node. And if we're within 0.1 units, then we switch our target to the next node and we move towards it using move and slide. And then save that as a unit in here. And I'll save this scene as well. I'm gonna add in a camera and I'll instance this unit onto the, the navigation here and I'll just put it right there now I can move this And there we go, um, and add to this camera a script. That just, all it does is, when you press down the left mouse button, it shoots a raycast outwards and calls a raycast function here, and calls, if it hits something, it calls in the units group the move to method with the position that it hit as the target position. So if I just hit play here, you can see the unit moves everywhere and it avoids the obstacles. And it can't fit under this one, so we're good there. Now you'll notice if I change the size of the things in here, like let's say I change the height to one and I change the radius to point 0.1 and I click bake, then I hit play here it'll just click right through. If I had collision on it, it wouldn't be able to move through, it would just get stuck. So I prefer to have it move the way it's supposed to than to get stuck on things. Just put the collision on a separate layer, maybe, so you can still have hitboxes and stuff on it. And always make sure to use the appropriate nav mesh for each unit. And you can see here if I go in and set the max climb height then I'll be able to move on top of things and it'll move appropriately and that's all yeah it's it's pretty simple and straightforward to use it's pretty cool